McDonald's, um, all these like drive through things with like cheeseburgers and cheesy things. They absolutely use addictive substances, which get you hooked. Um, how do we, meaning we, meaning my program, how do we try to combat this, right? Is if you notice, like, you know, the treat is only at night. Like we do give you sugar and we do give you like little goodies, but only at night. And a lot of times people say like, oh, why are you giving me a treat at night? Isn't that the worst time to eat sugar? No, it's actually the best time to, um, to eat sugar because if you eat sugar or salt or things like this at 2 p.m., basically junk, you're going to want more sugar and junk at 3 and at 4 and at 5. But if you eat it at um, 7 p.m. after a full day of eating healthy, you're not going to want it as much, hopefully, unless there's like a real, um, a real sugar addiction. Um, so another thing that um, which will come up when we talk about the tools is glycemic index. So some of you have heard of it. Some of you have not. Um, the problem is, is that you can't look at it on a label of food, meaning when you pick up a package of food, you don't see, um, you see the calories, you see the fat, you see the sugar, you see the carbs. It does not say glycemic index. So what is glycemic index in, in simple English is how quickly or slowly what you're eating absorbs into your blood sugar. And if you think of your blood sugar like a, like a river, we want it to just like flow nice and calm all day. That's what we want, right? Then we don't get like spikes. And the second it spikes, we start getting like hungry and crazy and crazy and I want more, 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 more. So sometimes what I'm trying to say is that it's not because of our own fault. It's because of the foods that we're choosing that could be avoided. So foods with high glycemic index will do that to you. Foods with low glycemic index will not do that to you. So on the plan, a lot of times people ask me, why can't I have X, Y, and Z as a snack? It's low calorie. It seems healthy. And a lot of times the reason is not anything you'll see on the label, but because it's a high glycemic index food. It may be low calories, it may seem healthy, but it will spike your blood sugar. Um, so this is why um, when you're reading ingredients on something, the first thing you want to do is, like, even when I give a class in, like, my kid's school and I give a class to little kids or whatever, I tell them to look at, like, to count the amount of ingredients, right? Um if you see that it's like more than six, seven ingredients max, that's already a lot, right? That means there's for sure junk in there. And the things that you really want to watch out for are corn syrup, sugar, um, hydrogenated oils. Um, and this is not going to be listed, what we said before, the nicotine fast food. That's not going to be listed. But that's what you're looking for. So if corn syrup is, let's say, the sixth ingredient out of seven, that's nowhere near as bad if, as if it's the first Okay, so somebody actually brought me, and I'll try to post it on the chat later. I don't publicly post um, bad companies, like companies of foods that are not good, because I don't want to bash. Maybe I'll block out the name. I'll post it on the chat. Somebody brought me an item that seemed very, very innocent, like the calories were pretty low. It had some protein. And then when I started reading the ingredients, the first ingredient was corn syrup. Second ingredient was sugar. There was palm oil, which is not a healthy fat. So basically, if she would eat it, if all we cared about was calories, that would be fine. But she would very soon get nashy and cravy and hungry and her blood sugar would spike. And she might even start thinking like, oh, what's wrong with me? Like, I can't stick to a diet. Um, I have to, I have a picture of it. I'm going to post it. I don't remember. Um, okay. So this basically just quickly covered the things that we could do to prevent getting into that mode. It's almost like, Let's say you have a kid that's not doing so well in school. Sometimes it's something about the kid, like maybe the kid needs tutoring, but maybe it's too hot in the classroom. You know what I mean? Like maybe it's too hot in the classroom. Maybe it's too cold. Maybe the seat of your child is too far from the blackboard. If those are the reasons, that's so much easier. And you want to address that first, like the temperature in the room. You want to address that before you start getting tutoring, diagnosing them, getting them evaluated, labeling them, um, spending money on tutors. So that's what I'm saying. Like, first we have to evaluate what we're eating. And then, like, so to speak, change the temperature in the room. That's easier than taking all the extra steps. So that's the point of this, just to give you, like, a little food for thought of what we're eating. 
Um, and if you're on the plan, which most of you are, then you don't have to worry because anything that we give on the plan is already a low glycemic index food and we wouldn't give you foods that will do that to you. But when you're choosing treats, just make sure that you're really using your treats in the evening and that you're choosing wisely and reading the ingredients. Okay. Um, now, very, very, very important topic. Hunger versus emotional eating. How do we know the difference? Like, like am I hungry? Do I want to eat 